Some aspects of the job don't come naturally to Kenny Dalglish. Perhaps it comes from the Scottish background where footballers tend to be seen and not heard. Interviewing Kenny, the press has long since concluded, can be a bit like drawing teeth, but he fulfills his responsibilities and they make the best of it. What Kenny has, has got to come to terms with is that criticism, he didn't have much criticism as a player, but as a manager you get criticism and you get it from various quarters and it's something that nobody likes and it's very difficult to accept it but it's something that as a young manager he, he has got to understand come to terms with i think a manager's attitude and commander is tremendous really um Lauro's playing out of position and he's, he's as good a game as anybody on the pitch the talk is football but everyone here knows that the story of the day must be the pre-match incident Doug Leach does his best to talk only of the game, but next day the papers will say different. We couldn't have asked for any more from any of the lads. He's a nightmare for the press. I think Kenny, if you don't know him, can be a very um, awkward guy. But I mean, he's a very private person. I mean, he's only got time for his family and people that he really knows. Um, ideally, um, you know, he'd like to play the game of football and go straight, get into his car and go straight home and not have to talk to anybody afterwards. He. Um, You've got to get to know him. Kenny Dalglish took over as manager in the wake of Liverpool's darkest hour. The Heysel Stadium slaughter of the innocents before last year's European Cup final added a miserable new dimension to the club's affairs that it ill-deserved. A reputation for good-natured zeal in the cause of football was suddenly replaced with the stigma of violence and death. Now Dalglish was to play a major part in the rebuilding of image while deprived of a European stage for his team to perform on. Cardiff, 1985, and the goal that takes Scotland a step nearer the World Cup finals. But out of the celebration came grief, with the death right after the match of Jock Steen, the man who did so much to influence Kenny's career with Celtic in Scotland. I was injured for the game, and uh, I didn't fancy going to watch the game. It had been, uh, been worse watching it than 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 not being there at all if we weren't playing. And I went to watch uh, another game at Ipswich that night and um, I heard the result on the radio. But I also heard that uh, Jock Steen had, had collapsed. And obviously we were hoping that everything would be all right. But when I phoned home, my wife had told me that he died. And really put any perspective of football, there's no game that important that it causes somebody's life, really. But, um, I think it was nice and it was and fitting. And I think it, I like to agree as well that it was great for Jock Steen that the work he'd done for this World Cup had been seen through by the fact that it last beat Australia to qualify. About to make more football history by becoming the first Scot to play in four World Cup finals, an injury at Wembley forced O'Gleish out of the Scottish squad on the very eve of their departure for Mexico. Now he will be confined to a television view of his country's progress in the finals rather than as a key participant. All three World Cups, Scotland have been criticised really for not going further. But I think maybe we tend to forget the size of the nation we are. We're relatively small compared to a lot of other countries that are more successful than us. And I think when Scotland qualify for World Cup finals, I think that in itself is an achievement. Without giving anybody the impression that players regard that as being as successful as they want to be. Players go there and they want to be a lot more successful than, than what they were obviously just qualifying. Recent games for Scotland provided Dalglish with a chance to team up once again with Graham Souness, home from Italy and now player manager of Glasgow Rangers, Kenny's boyhood heroes. Since their glory days at Anfield, they have been close friends, although in earlier times, rooming together on international duty had its moments of uncertainty. Funny story was, at least I thought it was funny. But at the time, you know, I used to use oh, smelly aftershaves and I used to dry my hair with a hair dryer. The three nights we were there, I used to go to bed and no Kenny, and I'd heard all the stories of Kenny, you know, was straight liver, didn't drink, didn't go out, just some 12 o'clock at night, no Kenny. So it was only maybe five years afterwards, maybe five years? Roughly four or five years afterwards at Liverpool, 
I said, do you remember Frank for us? Not the very first time I seen you. I said, well, where did you used to go to at night when I used to go to bed? He says, well, I'd heard you were a bit of a poof. He said, I didn't want to come into the dressing room. So like, that'll do, mate. So I went out and got married then. <laughs> Glasgow once again salutes Kenny Dalgleish. Fifteen years after his international debut, the Hamden Road marks another milestone in this distinguished career. 100 appearances for his country and the presentation of a gold cap for his efforts. Romania will supply the opposition for this World Cup warm-up, but in the eyes of the 54,000 fans, this is Dalglish's night. But the crowd didn't realise it was probably his last appearance at Scotland's beloved Hamden. Even the credit to the game, both on and off the field, as I say, because he's never been involved in anything unsavoury off the pitch, and any people who are looking for sponsorships or, or, or anything that's good for the game, uh, your mind just springs to him. Of course he'll go down alongside the great Bill Shankly, and Shanks was really did walk on water, and he's right up there with him, and that's the greatest compliment I can pay him. Can Kenny Dalglish not leave me anything at all? I mean, he's got to take everything away from me. He's had more money, more caps, more goals. I mean, uh, Abby's will. What am I going to leave to my children? He's by far the most capped scored in the game's history. Indeed, the most successful Scottish footballer of the lot. There'd be more spectacular players than him. If you're talking about an all-round footballer, there hasn't been a better one in my playing days. Maybe it's a schoolboy thing. I mean, think of Pelly and I think of Cruyff. Now, they were obviously tremendous players. I'm not saying he's better than them, but I'm saying he's better than Maradona. He's better than Rummenigge and better than Platini. And his best days at Liverpool. I would say he was the best player in the world, without any shadow of a doubt. Kenny Dalglish won the only medal that had eluded him in 18 years of professional football when he guided Liverpool to victory in the FA Cup final at Wembley. Yet another chapter in a remarkable story had been written about a man whose achievements and talents are known throughout the world. Obviously, um, you can't go on forever. As long as I think that I'm capable of doing something, whether it's uh, first team level or reserve team level or what, I'll continue to play. When that time stops, I'll be the first to hold my hand up and pack it up. <laughs> 